everyone. Thank you very much for coming to my talk, my TED talk today. Um, I and also thank you for everybody who is tuning in on YouTube. Um, who knew that this could even happen? So hello. Uh, I I'm going to tell you why I wanted to do this class, but before I want to actually ask you guys a question and just have you think about it, including all my esteemed colleagues. Why are you here? Why are you specifically here in this class right now? To have a better understanding of the nervous system. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Think about what your intention is and think about what your objective is. Part of what I want to do, I want to create more intelligent bodywork consumers. I want to create more kinesthetic awareness and intelligence so that people that get on my table can go out into the real world and know it doesn't make any difference if I know your shoulders are up here all day long. It makes a difference if you do. And some people don't. Like literally, I'm like, relax your jaw. Relax your And like, it, it doesn't even compute because a lot of stuff has gotten in the way, which we're going to talk about. So, basically, this class is about the nervous system, about its function, about how it is adaptable, and about how it integrates. And the, the objectives are, first and foremost, give you each a rudimentary understanding of the nervous system. And then we're going to discuss the three areas of stress, which anybody that has been on my table knows that I go and talk about that a lot. And then finally tell you about the three pillars and go through each journey, both PT, chiropractic, and massage, and explain what the beginning of the process generally looks like, what the middle of the process generally looks like, and what the end of the process end. You can also think about that acute care, things that happen like immediately when you're, you've just had an accident or you've just had surgery, Subacute care, somewhere in the middle, and then wellness care. And many people haven't heard of the phrase wellness care because they think they need to just go to the chiropractor when I hurt. So I need to go to the chiropractor. So I'd be out of pain. But what I want this talk to start to do is give you an idea of how this can be implemented throughout your life. So first and foremost, and many of you probably know this, so if it's a repeat, welcome uh, to another discussion of some of the things you already know. First and foremost, we're going to talk about the automatic nervous system. And those of you at home will not be able to see this. So I always tell people that this is kind of the big overarching umbrella of the nervous system. Over here, we have the parasympathetic, and I'm not going to write it out because you can ask me if you forget what the word is. Parasympathetic, and this is the sympathetic part of the nervous system. What this means is that's our relaxation, that the reparative part of the nervous system is active when we sleep. And sympathetic, on the other hand, fight or flight, many of you have probably heard that phrase before. And there are things that are associated with each of these nervous systems. For example, sympathetic, you have more hypertrophic muscles, so your muscles are tighter. You can have increased jaw tension, your heart rate can increase, pupils constrict, blood to the extremities, because you're running away from the saber tooth tiger. That's we need all of that. But what happens? We get stuck there. Parasympathetic, on the other hand, relaxed muscles, your heart rate is lower. They call this the feed and breathe system. There's increased blood flow to your viscera. All your guts get more blood. Pupils are, uh, pupils are dilated and you have increased digestion and reproduction. So tell me something. What does nervous system function mean? Does anybody have any idea? If not, that's cool, but I just, I thought I'd ask. Think about it at home, too, and if you do, I want you to raise your hand and be like, me, me. Anyway, okay, how about I tell you, and welcome. We have another friend joining us. Um, 
what the nervous system is, is an organized structure of nerve tissue in the body. It includes the central nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, and it contains the peripheral nervous system, which are the nerves that exceed or extend from the spinal cord to the rest of the body. And there are three functions of the nervous system. Sensation, integration, and response. So, does anybody have a idea? How does the nervous system, what's an example of the sensation? Touch. Touch. I, hot, hot stove, pull my finger away. Soft hair stroking, hitting a volleyball across the net, or cold air on your neck. This is all sensation. Integration, that's when sensory input is converted to electrical signals called nerve impulses. And then those are transmitted to the brain. And there the signals are brought together to create sensations, produce thoughts, to add memory. And each decision, or many decisions are made in each moment based on that sensory input. Massage, what that is doing basically is integrating proprioceptive feedback towards release. Fluidity and parasympathetic physiology. So that's the body integrating those two sensations. And then finally, response. Examples of how the nervous system can respond. Increased cortisol levels when you're stressed. All of us probably know that very well, or when you drink 40 ounces of caffeine a day. Um, I cut it in half, I promise. <laughs> Endorphin. Um, basically, endorphin and oxytocin in response to massage, to relaxation, to meditation, to rewiring movement patterns, and also scar tissue. Scar tissue is definitely a response in response to injury or surgery. And also, one more response, plaque builds up on our arteries when we've had a McDonald's diet for 30 years. Many of those people exist in my life. So, what does adaptability mean and why is it important? Anyone? <laughs> They're there. Why, why, why does it matter if I, I'm not going to go around like this all the time? I'm going to be dead in 10 years if this <laughs> is where I'm at. So, like I said, the people that come into me, I'm like, it doesn't matter if I know you're doing this. You don't. And so that's what this is about, is getting online. This is school. Body work is school for your nervous system. So the ability of the nervous system basically to traverse the continuum between that sympathetic and parasympathetic place. We need both of them to survive. So now, and this, people better have some responses. What stops this process, hinders all this process? Anybody have an idea? Stress? Did I hear? Stress? Okay. Fabulous. Biomechanics. Biomechanics, how we move, how our joints are moving through the world. Yes, for sure. Three ideas of major areas of stress that we all experience. First of all, we've got biological, and I'm just going to, we're going to abbreviate. Then we've got physical. And finally, psychological. So, biological, the things we put in our bodies. Examples, obviously, food, drugs. Also, I'm going to just say here, emotions are chemistry. They're biochemistry. With physical, physical stressors include injuries, surgeries, exercise, sex, gardening, chiropractic work, body work. Stressors, when I say stressors, they can be both positive and negative, depending on who the person is and depending on what you want to do in your life. So what happens when stress affects the body systems? Anybody have any ideas? Come on. I hear it every day. I come in and I'm like, okay, what's happening? Pain. Pain. Tightness. Tightness. Anything else? Blood flow issues. Blood flow. Blood flow. Raised heart rate, digestive issues, increased asthma, increased inflammation. I mean, a ton of stuff. Um, yeah, heart racing. It, I 
exhaustion, trouble sleeping, headaches of every kind, dizziness, shaking, trouble sexually, oh, depression, <laughs> weakened immune systems. We don't want this, do we? Or maybe I just don't want this, but anyway. <laughs> um, so what do we do? What does that mean that we do? To address the effects of stress on the body, we have to engage in self-care, period. Sorry. It's just people sometimes they think it's going to be an magic bullet. One, one massage, yeah, yeah, I'll feel good. I'll be fine. And I come in and I'm the first thing I ask people, I'm like, how do you feel? Like, My neck still hurts and I'm like, and I'm like, that's going to happen. One massage is not, one PT, one adjustment isn't going to undo 40 years of patterns that we've created, but it's the start. Um, so, self-care in the three areas. I'm going to talk about a little bit of the things that we can do. So, on my part, these are not prescriptive cuffs outside of my scope of practice. These guys can tell you what they what to do all they want. Um, my colleagues, that is, for those at home that don't know who I'm gesturing to. Um, so, biomechanically, Anybody have an idea of what can we do self-care-wise, biomechanically? All the things we shove in our body. Come on. Anyone? Eat well. Eat well. Drink water. Drink water. That's at the top. Sleep. So, that was second. I was going <laughs> to say, the top in every area, in my humble opinion, is water and sleep. And we all suck at that. Many, many of us suck at that. In a loving way. But let's just reevaluate. Re so, a couple of additional ideas. Drink more water, we got that. Talk to a naturopath, do an elimination diet. If something's bugging you, you're puking every time you eat whatever. Hi, hello. Um, you can also start probiotics, decrease sugar intake, make your lunches every day. Before you head, drop your caffeine from 40 to 20. Decrease inflammation, get enough sleep, and rest your gut from whatever you've been shoving down it for the last 40 years, 25, 3, 8, <laughs> in some cases. Um, okay, so physically, what can we do? Self-care. Move. Movement is medicine. Don't ever forget it. Movement is medicine. And for all you people who have had 17, almost 18 surgeries like me, there is always ways you can move your body. There are always things that you can do. If you need resourcing about how to do that, call me, call us. That's what we do. So what else besides exercise, movement? Same thing, a couple of same things so that they can jump from biochemical to physical, decrease inflammation, go to the chiropractor, get a massage. And like I said, I just keep coming back to resting because it is so inherent in our life that people are getting so far less sleep than they need. So I really wanted to hit that one a lot. Okay, so there's physical, psychologically. There, I'll, I'll start therapy. Love it. Sleep again. Sleep again. <laughs> what, what was the other one? Gratitude. <gasps> I love that one. That one is so, so good. That, oh, doesn't it just, it, that's really, and it's hard. Some days it's hard. Some days it's like, no, I don't care. I don't want to do it. But it clears something in me. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, talks with friends, yoga, singing. Intimacy with a partner, writing in a journal, painting. There are a million things that you can do to relax your nervous system and your psychology. I like the phrase that a chiropractor once came up with, neurons that fire together, wire together. Meaning that how we think is where our bodies are going. So in order to change this, we have to change this. And my, one of my biggest things I do is change the way people think, period. That's all I do. So now we move on to nervous system integration, making all of this whole 
Wasn't that an unexpected gesture? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, the ability of the nervous system to traverse between sympathetic and parasympathetic. So the question is how better to do this? And that is where I get to take a little break because enter the three pillars, which in case anybody doesn't know, and for those of you following along at home, chiropractic work, physical, physiotherapy, and massage therapy, cranial sacral therapy. And what I would love to do, and kind of what I had asked my colleagues to do, is discuss their paradigm and discuss a little bit about the beginning, about the middle, and about the end of the process. And again, with the idea that the beginning, more acute kind of care, middle is subacute, and then in the end, it's going to be a way to use wellness care in each of the different paradigms. So, first and foremost, we have chiropractic work. Can I try to use some oxytocin? Yay! <laughs> Fabulous! <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I am Dr. Flood. Uh, so, chiropractic. A lot of people come in for pain, but like, why would that even work? Right? A lot of people just come in like, I, I have pain here. Cool, and then I don't adjust there, and they get really upset, except when it helps. And why does that work? Um, for every, so basics, brain, nervous system, everything goes right to the spine. Anyone know how many ways the spine needs to function together? How, how many ways it needs to move together? Tori? Yes, six. So every, at every level, you should be able to go forward, backward, left, right, and rotate both ways. If one of those areas gets restricted, somewhere above and below starts moving too much to keep allowing you to do what you want to do. Typically, where that movement happens, the ligament gets overstretched and eventually it's going to be causing inflammation. Inflammation can affect blood flow, can affect nervous system function, and when you're when it gets too much, the brain will eventually be like, oh, that's moving too much, I don't want it to do that. Muscles will cramp up, and that's when you start to feel pain, because most of the, the nerve fibers in the body are found in the muscles. So chiropractic, what we do is we find where the area is restricted, de-restrict it to allow your body to maintain good function and then allow massage therapists, PTs, or other people to work on the body to help it move better. Um, how that usually works, people would come in, a typical treatment, you come in two times a week for about four to six weeks, we do an evaluation to see how you're functioning. We we'll go to one time a week, and then we go into more of a maintenance care every two to four weeks. You come in to make sure that everything's functioning, so you don't get to the level where you come in in horrible pain. Um, to help me with that, we're going to our beautiful PTs, who will just tell you about how they can help you with function. Hello. I'm Dr. Tori Harrison. I'm one of the physical therapists here. Um, and our kind of philosophy here as far as physical therapy is looking at the way that you move and function and helping you to improve your dysfunctional movement patterns. So same thing as Sarah said, when people come in, we tend to meet people who are in pain and discomfort. The first thing that we want to do is try to reset that symptom, right? You can't learn something new if you're just focused on the pain and the discomfort that you're currently in. Once we get the symptom to calm down, the next is to reinforce it. So teaching you what you can do at home, using a foam roller, using a lacrosse ball, a massage gun, stretches, things that you can do to support um, the work that we've done here. The third step is the um, recoding. So we tend to pick up poor dysfunctional movement patterns when we have pain. We feel pain, we want to get out of that pain, so the body will move in some sort of way to mitigate that pain. If we never retrain that movement pattern, we'll still have the same, same patterns, even if the pain isn't there, which then keeps confounding as we get more injuries and keep moving more dysfunctionally. So we're looking at the way that you are moving and really teaching you how to recode those patterns so that you update the software in the brain and move better. Pass it off. David. I'm David Valencia, I'm the physical therapist here. Uh, you can look at it as reset, recode, and then reinforcing that loop over and over. So maybe as, as like an example, 
I sit for years. In school, I commute, I work, and this is what my body wants to get really good at. But then on the weekends, I'm going to go play basketball. It's not going to work. You're going to do it, you're going to feel fine until you don't, and then something gets really stuck. If you came into traditional generic PT, you can make you do a couple of movement exercises, maybe you feel better, maybe you wouldn't, but for the most part, nothing has gotten reset. If we use something like chiropractic care, and then we don't force it, but we allow the body to find a new space, we reset that symptom, it's a lot less noise. Now you're able to find more of a signal. Now you're able to pay attention to, okay, was I in pain before? What was causing the pain? And the game that we try to play here is, well, if the joint is in a stuck position, is it that it's being pulled in that position because of something that I've done? Or is it just blocked because I haven't pulled myself out of this position for a long time? The caveat to this is that if you're younger, it's easier. If you're older, it's not. So what Christine was saying is that then add a couple of decades to whatever dysfunction you have, what Tori was saying, then put a compounding effort and the body gets confounded with, and then I rolled my ankle, now my back hurts, and then 20 years later I'm walking around like this, but I'm still trying to play basketball. It doesn't really work. So then full circle, what we try to do here, and as far as what the wellness component is, if you're thinking acute, this is when it happened, about a month, four to six weeks. Subacute, a month and a half going into the three month, Anything that's more than three months, if you're in discomfort, not even pain, if you're in discomfort for more than three months, you have chronic pain. There's no way around that. And for a lot of us, we deny it, we refuse it, but you live in pain. That took time to get there. And again, if you're older, it's going to take us a lot longer to try to break that loop, because it is a loop. Every time that we pull you into a good position, the memory of the body says, no, I need to go back to work. And it will take months for your body to get here, and it might take years depending on who you are, your background, how you sleep, how you think, what you eat. Didn't talk about breathing, but how well you breathe, because if you can't breathe, you can't do it. So what it is that we do here, back full circle, is we'll grab a person that has a lot of noise, and we reset them. We either reset them using some sort of chiropractic, physiotherapy, massage care. We try to reduce the symptom so then the person can start thinking about managing what could have caused that symptom. We don't stop at, this is your pain. We take that extra step and think, okay, what's causing your pain? And then on top of that, can we teach you how to use this, this, and this? Can we force you to think in a different way? Can we keep you in this place while you go live your life? And then hopefully the body will allow itself to heal. Putting it all together further, if you keep coming in, Periodically, in and out, you get your massage care, you get your chiropractic maintenance, it goes to another level. Physiotherapy comes in and says, okay, we'll take you to the next part, whatever that next part is. Maybe the shoulder's been stuck here for a couple of months, now it can break open and it sits a little bit better, whatever it might be. The way that you support this is long term, so if you'd like to go over again. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, to my very talented colleagues. Um, as far as massage and its role in this whole process, massage is a very interesting word because there are many different paradigms within and underneath it. A lot of people have heard the phrase deep tissue, Swedish, Traeger, they've heard a lot of types of massage. A lot of massage, think of massage with a capital M, what you're doing is you're using the muscle itself to access the nervous system towards the end of creating that nervous system adaptability. Um, what can happen is that you can go in and you can rub one of these muscles until the cows come home, but there are at least 60 to 80 things associated with that sympathetic nervous system. Only one is a tight levator scapular muscle. And as I tell people, people always come into me and they're like, rub where it hurts, <laughs> rub me where it hurts. And I'm like, I try to tell them, this is the effect, the cause may be here, here, or down in my foot. So that's where fascia comes in. And that's where, fascia is basically the white stuff on chicken, it's connective tissue. It surrounds bones, organs, 
nerves, muscles, you name it, it's covered in fascia. And why it's important and how it has to do with all of this. Those three stressors that I named. Fascia, it's like a mesh, like cheesecloth, think of it. In the middle, it's a watery brown substance where all the neurochemistry of the body is taking place, including all the chemicals that say levator scapula, spasm, this much, heart rate be this high, jaw be this tense. So, like I said, I could rub until the cows come home, but I rub this and it frees up. I still got my jaw and this shoulder thing happening. So, Let's just address the whole thing in the beginning and the cause of it. So, what can happen in the beginning? People will come in that acute phase, that initial phase, like last anywhere from a couple of weeks to a month, month and a half. And in the beginning, we will work a lot of muscles, but we're going to work fascia as well. And how that is different is that fascia, that brown substance, it starts to become thick and viscous and sticky. And so if this is a muscle fiber shortening, what happens is we all become prisoners of our own fascia. And like I said, then they come into me and they're like, "Run me where it hurts. And no, well, okay, so, but my favorite though is I love to tissue lay into me. I want to feel it. And I'm like, you're like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, oh my God. And what happened when I started this 20 million years ago is that I basically, I would push past a lot of people's guarding. And all that would do is hurt their tissue and my hand. And that's when I learned craniosacral. Craniosacral therapy is, it is a paradigm, a massage paradigm that uses cerebrospinal fluid in the brain. And what that is, is food for this relaxation part of the nervous system. And it uses cerebrospinal fluid, which you follow it, and there is a very specific way that you work it to actually help beeline underneath the nervous system that thinks that it has to sit there like this, and it can start to unwind. That viscosity and that stickiness can start to become more fluid so that all the chemistry that are, is controlling this dilator scapular muscle or my butt that's very, very clenched or my shoulders that are like this, that is when we can open it up. And then, then the muscles present themselves to you instead of having to push through all of that stuff. In addition, Fascia, it's a non-local phenomenon. So I can address your neck from your toe. And I really just like to get people thinking holistically, thinking systems-based, because we can work the parts, and that's necessary, but we have to get this process back online. And that's part of what happens with massage in the subacute, that kind of one and a half months to three months, like David was talking about, is that we start to see more of that integration, more where clients can lay on the table and immediately drop in, allow their jaws to relax, allow their pelvic floors to just chill. That takes practice. That is what I tell people when they get on my table is welcome to school for your nervous system. That is what I think the body work can be for everyone. And especially here, uh, I've worked in a lot of chiropractic offices in the last 21 years. The way that we are different is the integrative approach, is the combined sessions, the sessions that are also us discussing clients, skill sharing, and talking about best ways and best practices to help different clients based on whatever their medical needs are. That doesn't happen always. Mostly, and in all honesty, it's like, here, here's an adjustment. Okay, go schedule twice next month. And people go out there like, cool. They crack my bones, I feel good. Crack my bones. It's all about cracking the bones. It's about removing interference from your nervous system. 
And that is what this work does in different ways. So, in conclusion, what I learned from a ton of surgeries and doing this business for a long time is that self-care in each of these areas is absolutely paramount if we're going to have the most adaptable nervous system. And to be able to traverse through all of the sympathetic stress and reclaim our parasympathetic nervous systems. The nervous system controls everything in the body. <clears throat> movement, like I said, is life. And that movement includes biochemistry, which is also the physicality and the psychology. And the three pillars can assist you in this process. Thank you for coming. We are now going to actually open it up for questions. And even if, um, one, one sec, Max, Max, I see you back there. Even if you are a medical practitioner, I'd be curious for you to come up with a couple of questions. I love talking to my allopathic practitioners. So think about that. What were you going to say, my dear? Uh, we have a question online from Roberta. As I get older, my joints are tighter when I get out of bed. Anything I can do to help with that? I can tell you my personal experience with that. First and foremost, before I even get out of bed, I'm here. I'm taking my ankles, doing some range of motion in my ankles. I'm moving my hips and my knees side to side. I do a little cross leg yoga, Tori would go like this poses, and then I do it this way. So there's that. There is creating, in my opinion, create something, a, a, a ritual for yourself that helps you open up and greet your day. Make movement be a part of it and make breath be a part of it. And if you have for further questions. May I you back off of that? Yes. I remember. So the idea would be that Just like Christine is saying, you ritualize it, but maybe consider how it is that you're waking up. Do you wake up and just get out of bed and then things start to tighten up? Take a moment and breathe. But then consider the night before, is there a practice of stretching? Is there a practice of self-massage, foam rolling, massage gun, something to that effect that might be able to release the tension that the day created for you? If you don't release that tension, you go to sleep, your body is still tense, and it will go to sleep in a tight way. And then you wake up, and this is where you've been all night. So then the joints will feel really, really tight because of that. Think of it that way. So the night before, stretch them out a little bit, make them bouncy again, go to sleep, and then see what the effect is the next morning. Thank you for that addition. Um, I think also body work. Body work, and I, I find the reason I say that, and that's all of our body work, is because it does help smooth those transitions from parasympathetic sleep into waking. Those are all circadian rhythms, brain cycles, and making sure that your, ner your nervous system is controlling them. So really making sure that you're, you've got a program that works with your schedule, with your pocketbook, and also with the goals that you want to create. And know this the other thing. It's all work. There's no one magic bullet. And I tell some clients, guess what? You may never be out of pain. I am experiencing, as somebody with 35 plus years chronic pain, the least amount of pain that I have felt in my 53 years. And I, I really say that a lot of it is due to my colleagues and the things that they have taught me and the things that we've been able to create together. And anybody that wants to go on that journey, this is a great, safe, fabulous place to do it. Thank you. More questions? How young would you think that people should start being seen for all of this? This is the thing, and many people have different agreement or different beliefs about this. I believe that birth, birth takes a lot out of you as a baby, as a mommy. And 
I think that there are things that happen to the spine, to the nervous system during birth that can most indubitably be addressed by cranial sacral, for sure by an adjustment. And I'm sure there are uh, PT paradigms specifically dealing with infants and some of the things that they, they, they see. So yeah, thank you for that question. So you're that. saying that it's never too young is what you're saying. I think that is a very safe sentence. Thank you for encapsulating my thoughts. Yes, I don't believe it's ever too young. Um, and I think that teaching the nervous system how to be adaptable, it's only going to create brilliance in children as far as everything they're doing, walking, school, all the things. One more, we're going to oh, think about me on that. How important do you think it is for women that are either trying or uh, or pregnant to be getting work? For sh I say this, at age 53, I spent many years trying to have a child, finally finding out that I was not able to, and I was pretty depressed for about eight years about it. And I wish that I could have had this level of body work then, but what that, Birth and reproduction is all about the parasympathetic nervous system. And if you don't have access to that consciously or in your daily life, it, it will make, in my experience of working with mommies and babies for 21 years, that it will make the process harder. Can, let's say, it can make the process harder. Um, one way or another, you got to if you're a mommy, you're making a million new neuronal connections in a brain. I mean, that's a lot of work. Why wouldn't you want to get the most in-depth, comprehensive help for your nervous system as possible? That's my opinion. Anyway. Any more? That was good. I like that one. Ooh, yes. Uh, Riley asks online, what service would you suggest a patient start with and why? Oh. Oh, that's a great question, Riley. Thank you. I, it is my experience that I think that chiropractic work is a really good place to start. I say this because there are so many nervous system neuronal connections coming in and out of the spine, in through the skull and the head that if you've got subluxations or you've got vertebra that isn't moving, you're going to have more systemic a response, in my understanding and opinion, than just that tight with your scapula muscle. That said, what a chiropractic adjustment can do is break that up and help to bust into a system that has kept itself blocked for, for many good reasons but maybe not adaptive reasons. So I really think that chiropractic, not only can they oversee care, is that it really can just give that initial boost to the nervous system to help unlock the physiology that has been bound up for so long. Any other further thoughts about that from my colleagues? Yeah. I was going to just take back off that of, I often find like a chiropractic adjustment can get someone immediately out of pain. They yeah. come in and that's all people are going to care about. I'm in pain, help me get out of it. Yeah. Sarah can do her magic and boom, they're not in pain. But now how do you support that? How do you make sure they don't just go back to doing the same stupid things that got them into pain in the first place? That's where the rest of us come in as well to help now support that. So that's that teaching you to be aware of what it is you're doing that is putting you into that pain. What what positions, like you were talking about, the work positions, the staring at the phone, the whatever it is that you're doing that you can be aware of and create better patterns so that you have that sustained change. You don't just end up in the same pain over and over again. Not doing that band-aid approach, but actually going for the long term. Let's let's fix this. Yeah. To that end, though, it, I almost like looking at it like training. You are either retraining or just starting to train the body to be able to 
adapt to whatever its environment is, both internal and external. So I like looking at it like this. If I was some animal out there, for the most part, I'm going to be relaxed, parasympathetic. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to look for food. I'm going to eat my food. I'm going to digest it. Then something's going to try to eat me. For that brief period of time where I get to run away, sympathetic lights up. I feel what I feel, but then when the threat goes away, parasympathetic should automatically just come online. I think the problem for the majority of us is that once sympathetic turns on and I'm stressed, then the body stays stressed. The threat is not there. You're not in survival mode. Nothing's trying to eat you, presumably. But you still feel like you need to survive, and your system then takes that and goes, lock. Give that enough time, that turns into dysfunction, that turns into pain, and that's what we're talking about here. Resetting that loop and then giving you the time to train the system so that it can go back into its adaptive features the way it was designed. And in our society, in this culture, it's not really helping because we have to sit in front of something that stresses us throughout the day, and then we just feel like we're good, but our bodies have been like this for hours. So resetting that, Dr. Tori was saying, and allowing and giving it support so it doesn't end up here again, that takes time, but that's what we're supposed to do. Well, and also, chiropractically, if, you, if, if these 16 people are trying to work, if your body is on that sympathetic lockdown, we're trying to find out, hey, where is it that we actually need to go first to allow that whole unlock to happen? If all of those muscles and all that fascia has been so tight for so long, chiropractic we're, we're not necessarily taught to look just for the, the tight muscles, it's specifically to the spot where like you need to be adjusted in that moment to allow the whole system to unlock and that will allow them to do their work in a lot easier fashion and allow the work to be lasting so we can piggyback on them. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that honestly my, my, my clients that are getting chiropractic and massage they last long, the, the massage lasts longer, the chiropractic work, less she might be um, chiropractic lasts longer, and you put PT on that, it's a trifecta of, of just cementing all of these things that my colleagues been, have been talking about. And yes, guess what? It is a lot of work. However, it can be fun. <laughs> it can be creative. And there are ways and people out there to support the process, specifically here. Um, and it's incredibly rewarding. There it, is a moment where the person, and I've seen this too often, and it's happened to me too often, where I didn't know I was in discomfort until it wasn't there. Or yeah. the person finally feels that their body is free or doesn't have that symptom they've had driving their body mad for months, and they're free. That's rewarding for the individual as much as the provider. Any other questions? Something that in my mind is worth the most of physical therapists for those. Oh, yeah, also physical therapists for those who <laughs> don't know me um, is awareness, right? Awareness is key. And so, what are some strategies that you all give your clients to pay better attention throughout their day, whether it's tension they're holding, whether it's patterns they're, you know, negative? I have many. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to First of all, um, Paying attention to many different things. Uh, jaw tension is the bane of my existence, and the bane of so many people to get on my table is existence. So I'm going to give you a little thing. So most of us are always out there, we're talking like this, and people come in, and I'm like, how are you? And they're like, well, I've had a surgery, and I'm that, and this guy, and life, and I'm pretty stressed, whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. And so um, what, what I do, because what happens, our life, because of phones and computers is pulling us here. And what happens is that all of these muscles up here are working extra hard to keep us upright. Our jaw is part of that. So oftentimes, we're still here because our jaw is trying to be like, no, no. So two things that can actually interrupt a jaw that is spasming so much that people can't even get a deep breath and just a relaxed deep breath is a thought exercise. And if you've moved a muscle, you've done too much. Think about saying ah at the doctor and nothing else. Let that plot float away. 
Now, imagine saying, duh, to the most person would be the funniest to say it to. Okay, those two sounds can interrupt the spasming jaw long enough to get a deep breath. That's one thing I give my clients. Another thing I give my clients, because my experience here in Seattle, we're great at bio biochemical self-care. We're all vegan and gluten-free and la la la. And we're pretty good at we're really good at physical too, you know, tough mutter, and I'm gonna do this and I gotta go hike, blah blah blah. We're brilliant that way. Where we suck, frankly, is psychologically. And people are like, how do I meditate? How do I chill? What do I do? Where I tell people to start, pick a word or a phrase that you can go where there are no screens and people for three minutes a day and say it over and over and over again for three purposes. Happy neurotransmitters in your brain, oxygenation of your blood, and affirmation for your life. See what starts to evolve. Create personal rituals for yourself about things that feed you. Look for things, use your senses as antidotes. I used to have searing pain. I've had uh, two hip replacements in the last year and a half. I'm walking because of these people. Um, but that pain used to be very yellow, very orange, and just sit right here in my, in my hips. And I breathed, breathed in blue and purple. And it felt, I felt, the, it didn't take it away, but it went down. And this is the thing, as somebody with CPTSD, complex PTSD, for those of you following along at home, generalized anxiety disorder and panic disorder, sometimes homeostasis is a moment by moment consideration. And remembering to breathe is the other thing that I would say. And whatever way you can, keep the breath going and do so with a relaxed jaw. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. Mm -hmm. Yay. With a relaxed jaw and in and out of your nose gently. I can give you more details and Tori can give you the most details on how to breathe correctly. That was going to be my next question. What are your tips, or not my next question, but for you guys, what are your tips on breathing? For someone who has been a shallow breather in the majority of my life. I have a few. Do you want to go? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to kind of combine both yeah, those so questions that. of what can you do, right? You asked about awareness, is just starting to bring more awareness to your body. So we're all so in our heads so much of the time in this society, in this day and age. Can you notice your body before it starts screaming at you in pain? Because if you're in pain, you've already missed a lot of signals. It's There's been discomfort, there's tension, and sometimes it's Maybe you notice you start fidgeting in your seat a lot at work. You can't just sit or in class. You can't just sit still. Um, you keep moving your neck around. You're like Things like that where you don't say, oh, I'm in pain. But that's your body trying to say, I'm in discomfort. You need to move your position. You need to roll something out. You need to do something to change where you are right now. So the first thing is just, can you catch those, those yellow flags, those warning signs before it hits that red screaming, I'm in pain? So... One thing I'll tell a lot of people, especially like my people who sit at a desk all day, your phone and your computer is right there, set an alarm to go off maybe once an hour. That just says check in with your body. And that's maybe you close your eyes, so you're not looking at the screen, you're not getting that bright light, and you notice your breath. You notice, are my shoulders up here? Am I slouching forward? Um, you know, you just check, do I need a pee? And I've been ignoring that. <laughs> like Any of those things that your body is trying to tell you, that we don't pay attention to because we're in our head, we're doing our work, and we're here, and we're here. So taking that pause to check in with it. Then now to your question of, well, I noticed my breath, and I'm just breathing, only expanding my belly. Nothing is happening through the rest of the rib cage. It's short and shallow, that stressful, that sympathetic breathing. Then maybe it's, let me step away from the task at hand that is, is stressing me out. Maybe lay down on the floor. Give yourself a more comfortable position to allow the body to relax. And just take a few deep breaths. Maybe putting the hands on the rib cage and just trying to get expansion through the ribs themselves so that you're 
creating more of that mechanical pump that the breath should create back to getting things to flow, more fluidity in the body. If you're just breathing, belly breathing, which we've all been taught, not quite right. But if we're only breathing here and you're not actually expanding anything in the rib cage, that's not the most efficient way to breathe. You're not creating that vacuum wall in the knee. So by just taking a few moments, lay down, close the eyes, get rid of some of the stimulus that's always constantly coming at us, and just focus on taking a few deep breaths, put your hands on your chest, on your belly, you know, get that, that feedback and feel it, and see if you can just feel the system kind of calm down a little bit. That would be my, my first go-to. Um, after uh, one thing that I think is important to take into account, uh, it, not just from a female versus male perspective, but I like thinking of it as chicken or the egg, who cares, sometimes the damage is done. So if I have been sitting here, or if I have to wear a heavy bra, or if that bra has a very, very thick metal wire, whatever, it's already cut into me. This won't let me breathe. And even if I remove the bra, the body work hasn't been done. This is stuck. So maybe going and piggybacking off of that level of awareness and acknowledging that, mm, I'm here, okay. And if I try to take that breath, mm, I can't. Why is it stuck? If it is stuck, this is the conversation that kind of sets that up and goes, okay, how do you get unstuck? That would start it. But then that's how it starts, at least going back into this, that's what starts the long-term effect of it. It's not so much, okay, I can't breathe, I'm stressed. It's more, what do I have to do to maintain this nice, better breath? What's in my way already that I didn't even know about? And to breath, piggyback on that, what is needed? Daily practice, period. Period, period, end of story. Daily self-care, biochemical, physical, psychological, work it out, <laughs> you know? Um, I know it's a lot, and it does seem like this a lot. There are ways to take little bits. You don't have to do the whole PowerPoint presentation of all this, three, the three minutes a day. So to go to your question about the breathing specifically, the chanting thing, and it's part of why I like singing too, is I can't not breathe. So that's part of, I would say, with choosing a chant sort of thing. Also, many different uh, ways to breathe. There is the four, seven, eight breath, which you probably heard that. And there's also box breath. And that is four, four counts in. You're going to hold four counts. And then you exhale for four counts. And just do a few rounds of that. Same thing with the four, seven, eight, to clarify. The four, seven, eight, you're going to inhale at four. Hold your breath for seven. That's a little twist. And then exhale out the nose at eight. If you don't remember those numbers, what I have been trying to do, because there's a couple of really brilliant books I've been reading, thank you, Trey, about breath, and learning to extend exhales and the physiology about that, that's another class. But learning to extend your exhales and take just a few, a little bit less of an inhale, that is a really good practice. You want to go work out breath-wise, do that. And my last one, as a voice teacher, this is one that, okay, have you all seen the angel hair that's on Christmas trees? You know how it's just that fine little wisp of thread? You're going to say S and hold the S as long as you can. And you want it to be a uniform sound. No. Go as long as you can till you think you can't go anymore. Then blow it all out. Breathe it again. Do a few rounds of that. Be careful. Those of you that have low blood pressure like me, you can get a fun basal vagal response and almost get it. So just be careful. With that, because we don't want anything painting. So do it sitting down? Well, we don't want any talent. Or with a professional in, in, in tow. Yes. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> any other questions before we hold it up? Yes, dear? Uh, follow up from Roberta online. Any suggestions for my 94 year old mother? 
suggestions specifically with each type of self-care? That, that's the one part I had a question about. Um, I'm just going to real quick just highlight on those. 94, I, I hear you on this one. As far as movement, Google chair yoga, first of all. Secondly, look, look at me moving my arms. Look at me moving my arms. Oh my gosh, blood's flowing, it's happening. Or uh, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm an older woman, I can make sound, I can chant. Uh, yes? Oh, my God. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Um, so uh, also, therapy. I, I know a lot of, I want to get my mother, <laughs> she's probably watching, into therapy. I love you, mother. I love you. It's brilliant. I have such a good time. Anyway, um, and work out and, 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 and move. And, and little movement. Look, just. Oh, I'm moving. It's happening, you know. And and adjustments, <laughs> adjustments. So, for specifically Roberta, <laughs> um, I I would say that a good way for a nine to four year old, if they're not having a specific dysfunction, to maybe go around versus just a initial chiropractic, would be to get a craniosacral massage to help that nerve system that has been overtaxed relax. I know that goes against what we've been saying. But someone who is that old, um, who might have more brittle bones, I would A, before you saw ex uh, chiropractors get x-rays, you need to see what kind of a bone plight, how dense the bones are, to see if you need to use more of an instrument versus a high velocity thrust. And a good way to start that off besides those x-rays would be actually to go to a massage therapist, a craniosacral, to relax that nervous system and break up some of that to allow the body to take any adjustment that would be given. Fabulous. And I would say depending on their level of mobility, if they can walk, go for walks. If she's sitting, get yeah, chair yoga. If she can move her own body, she should move her own body. If she can't, then someone else, passive range of motion. Yeah. Just keeping things moving and flowing is best. Movement is medicine. For sure. All right, everybody. Thank you. For those of you tuning in, tuning in um, online, thank you for joining us. And uh, you can reach us, Three Pillars, Body Restoration Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs>